Today we're going to be talking about Ohm's Law. It's one of the fundamental laws that we use quite a lot in our discussion of electrical circuits. Ohm's Law states that the voltage across a conducting material is proportional to the current flowing through it. So V is proportional to I. Now whenever we have a linear proportionality then we can define a proportionality constant. And so for us the proportionality constant uh, is going to be resistance the resistance R is a proportionality constant. Now resistance is going to be a strictly positive number and it's going to be the constant that relates the current to the voltage. Proportionality constant that relates the current to the voltage. And so the unit for measuring resistance obviously has to relate the current to the voltage and so the proportionality constant is going to have a unit of volts per amp and we're going to call that the ohm in order and to honor George Simon Ohm who is credited with uh, discovering Ohm's law. In reality, he didn't discover it. Henry Cavendish actually discovered it before uh, Ohm was born, but Cavendish didn't publish those findings. We didn't discover Cavendish's work until uh, long after he had died. But, with, but the proportionality constant in Ohm's law is called resistance, and it's measured in the unit of ohms. So that's the law. So And, and it happens so much, it's any conductive material has this phenomenon. And so to to account for this, we're going to create a model. And, and it's our first circuit element. It's going to be called the resistor. And the circuit element for the resistor, the circuit symbol, is, is given here on the top of the page. And it is uh, kind of this little springy looking thing. And that's because it resembles the wire which is used to construct resistors. A resistor is normally a long piece of wire. And we zigzag it so it doesn't take up so much physical room. And so the circuit symbol looks like that. So this is the circuit symbol for the resistor and V equals IR is our Ohm's law. But notice that when we have V equals IR Ohm's law must be used in accordance with the passive sign convention. So notice here that our current is being directed into the positive terminal. And so Ohm's law must be used with the passive sign convention or things will not work out correctly. And so Remember, R is also a strictly positive number. R is a strictly positive number. So what that means is if R is positive and we're using this diagram where the current is going into the positive terminal, we can see that in Ohm's law, the current and the voltage will always have the same sign. If the current is positive, and since resistance is positive, the voltage will be positive. And if the current were to be negative, resistance is positive, then the voltage will be negative. And so we'll see that the current and the voltage always have the exact same sign because of Ohm's law and the fact that we're following the passive sign convention. So if we were to draw the IV characteristic, the voltage current characteristic for this element, we would see that it simply is a straight line that passes through the origin. And if you were to uh, figure the slope of this line and now we notice here that the current is the vertical axis and we have voltage on the horizontal axis so the, the slope is going to be the current over the voltage and we see that that is actually if we were to rearrange this equation we would see that R is going to be V over I so the slope of this line is going to be 1 over R it's the reciprocal of the resistance since we have the current on the vertical axis. And what that does is that get actually is from a, another view of Ohm's law. Ohm's law can be stated a completely different way. Ohm's law can be written as I equals V times G. And we see that the version of Ohm's law that we introduced a minute ago and this version are the same thing if G is represented as 1 over R. And so G is simply the reciprocal of the resistance. And it's in a, a unit of Siemens. A Siemen is an amp per volt. Siemens is named after the Siemens brothers in Germany. And so back to our IV characteristic, we see that the slope of the line on the IV characteristic for the resistor, the slope of the line is actually the conductance. So let's put Ohm's law to pr into use and so we can see uh, some how, how it works more clearly. All right, so here we have a, a few examples of Ohm's law. And so remember, Ohm's law must always follow the passive sign convention. So in this particular case, we have a current, which is being going to the right, 5 amps. 
the passive sign convention says that the current must be directed into the positive terminal. So if the current is going to the right, then we're going to get a plus with a, pl a positive polarity on the left. And then we can use V equals I times R. In this case, the current is 5 amperes. And then the resistance is 10 ohms. And we can see that the voltage here across this resistor is simply going to be 50 volts. Let's do another example. In this case, we have a resistor of 20 ohms, and it has a voltage across it of 2 volts. And maybe the question here is, what is the current uh, moving to the right? Remember, Ohm's law says that V equals I times R. In this case, we know V and we know R, so we're looking for I. So we know that I must be equal to, rearranging, V over R. But Ohm's law must follow the passive sign convention, so if the positive terminal, if the plus sign of the polarity is right here, then the Ohm's law will give us the current moving in this direction because the current must enter the positive terminal. And the green current in this case, I, is simply going to be the 2 volts across the 20 ohm resistor. And we'll see that we get a current, I, the green current, moving to the left, is going to be 1 tenth ampere. Well, the question was, what is the red current? We'll call this I prime. And I prime, the red current, is the current going the opposite direction. And we know from KCL that will have to be one negative one tenth ampere. The next example, we are given a voltage, 35 volts, plus to minus, and a current going in this direction of minus 5 amperes. And the question is, what is the resistance? Again, using Ohm's law and rearranging, rearranging for the resistance, we know that the resistance is going to be the voltage divided by the current. In this case, we see, and remember, the current must be directed into the positive terminal. So we need to redraw this and put the current going this way. Or likewise, we could have reversed the voltage, but we'll call this current 5 amperes. It's the negative of this one. And so we'll see that the resistance that we're looking for is going to be a 35 volts and it's being it's got a 5 amp current and the reason you get 35 volts and 5 amps then it must be a 7 ohm resistor now let's do ohm's law using the other view remember uh, v equals ir is ohm's law but also i equals vg is ohm's law and so in this case we are using the the conductance version of Ohm's law, I equals VG. Again, we must follow the passive sign convention. So we have must have the current going into the positive terminal. And so we have a voltage of 2 volts. And we have a conductance of 10 Siemens. And so that means we have a 20 amp current, which is flowing into this 10 Siemens resistor. In this case, we have a 1 half ampere current, which is flowing into 10 Siemens. Again, we must follow the passive sign convention, so I expect the voltage to exist across the resistor like that. V equals rearranging. V is going to be G divided by I, using the conductance version of Ohm's law. The conductance, excuse me, V equals I over G. Sorry about that. And the current is 1 half ampere. And we have a 10 semen conductance, which means I expect to see a 1 20th volt voltage across this, which is going to work out at 1 20th volt. And so in this last case, we have 5 amps flowing into this conductance. So we need to set up the passive sign convention properly. So what we can do is we can reverse the voltage if we choose and, and look for the voltage with the plus on the left, minus on the right. And that, of course, is going to be just simply 45 volts. It's the negative of what we're given down here. And so in this case, we're looking for the conductance. The conductance is found as I over V rearranging the conductance version of Ohm's law. And we have a current of 5 amperes, 45 volts will be our voltage. And we see that we simply have a conductance of 1 ninth Siemen. 
Well, let's look at a resistor now. We know Ohm's law. Let's look at resistors and power. Remember from our previous discussion that power power is electrical power is V times I. But we know that from Ohm's law that V can be written as I times R and then that has to be multiplied times I. So we can see that the electrical power in a resistor is I squared R. Or we could write it a different way. If you were to rearrange it the other direction, you can see the electrical power in a resistor is also going to be V squared over R. Now if you look at these two terms, hopefully you'll notice something right away. Remember that R is a positive number. I squared is always going to be positive. So the power absorbed, the power absorbed by resistor is always going to be a positive number. Likewise, the other view, resistance is always positive, voltage squared is always positive, and we see the power absorbed in resistor is always positive. We already knew that because we saw from Ohm's law that the current and the voltage, the current through a resistor and the voltage across it, always have to be the same sign, S-I-G-N, because the resistance is a positive number. And if we're doing power absorbed and voltage and current are always the same sign, we're going to have a positive voltage and a positive current is going to give us a positive power absorbed. Or we could have a negative voltage and a negative current. Again, it's a positive power absorbed. So resistors, the power absorbed in a resistor is always positive. Always, always, always. And we see that here and there. And because of that, we say resistors are said to be passive elements. They only absorb power. And a resistor cannot generate power under any condition. They always absorb the energy. Now what does a resistor do with the energy? Well, they turn them into heat. But we'll talk more about that in a later, in a later lesson. So let's use our, our, our newfound information about electrical power and resistors and work a few examples. So here we have the, the same problems as before. And so let's find the power absorbed. We're looking for the power absorbed in all of these resistors. And so here we have a current and we have a resistance. And so we could do, we could find the voltage and then compute V times I, but we now know that the power absorbed in a resistor can be written as I squared times R. And so I is 25, uh, excuse me, I is 5 amps. So we get 5 amps squared and the resistance is 10 ohms and we see that that works out to be 250 watts absorbed, positive. In this case we have the voltage across the resistor and its resistance. Again we could find the current using Ohm's law and do V times I or we can use our shortcut the power absorbed in a resistor is V squared over R and so we have 2 volts squared and then we have a 20 ohm resistor and when you calculate that you'll find that the power absorbed in this resistor is 1 fifth watt. And here we have the current and the voltage of a resistor and the only way to find this or at least the most efficient way to find the power absorbed here is with the definition of power that we had earlier V times I. And remember for the passive sign convention we need the current directed into the positive terminal the current directed into the positive terminal in this case is going to be a 5 amperes. And so we have a voltage of 35 volts. And the current directed into the positive terminal of that 35 volts is 5 amperes. And so we see we have 175 watts absorbed. Let's do the conductance version and find the power. In this case we have a voltage and we have a conductance. And so if we were to take our relationship and find the power absorbed in a resistor, we know it's V squared over R, but the conductance version says it's going to be V squared times the conductance, V squared G. So in this case, we have a voltage of 2 volts, and that's squared, and we have 10 Siemens of conductance. And so I would expect to see 40 watts absorbed by this 10 Siemens resistor. In this case, we have a, res uh, a current flowing, one half amp into a 10 semen conductance, and so the power absorbed in a, in a resistor from the conductance viewpoint can be written as I squared over G, and so we have one half amp 
squared and we have 10 siemens of conductance and so I would expect to see 1 40th of a watt or that would be 25 milliwatts. And lastly we have a current and we have a voltage. We, again we must satisfy the passive sign convention so we need the current in this direction and this would be a negative 5 amperes and that should make us feel pretty good. We have a negative current going into the positive terminal of a negative voltage so we'll see the power absorbed in this guy V times I as always. We have negative 5 amps times negative 45 volts and the result of that would be a positive and it should be because resistors are, po are passive a positive 225 watts. So in each of these cases the resistors are absorbing a positive power which they should because they're passive circuit elements. So now we have Ohm's law. Uh, Ohm's law is one of the most fundamental laws of, elec of electricity. We use it all the time. A resistor is probably the most common circuit element and so we see the relationship between V and I in a resistor is Ohm's law. V equals IR or by duality I equals VG. It's an alternate view of the same phenomenon and we've also looked at how the power gets related to that. So we'll, we'll take our newfound knowledge on resistors and all the knowledge we have on voltage and current sources and now we're, now we're ready to really solve most every basic electrical circuit. Talk to you next time.